would like to start by thanking ONT for allowing me to present here today. Uh, and uh, the topic I'm interested in is uh, actually protists. So protists are single cell eukaryotes. And if we look at across a current view of eukaryotes uh, and their genome sequences today, we can see that certain groups are uh, overrepresented uh, in the number of genome sequences that have been, has been generated. So animals, fungi, land plants, uh, and algae are all very well represented in genome sequences and transcriptomes, whereas many uh, protist lineages have only very few sample genomes. And um, many of the protist lineages which has been sampled are uh, from parasitic lineages. And we are interested in looking at Free living, represent, free living relatives of those uh, parasite lineages to try to see if we can tell how they have evolved or to be successf successful as parasites. Um, to date, many of the draft genomes which are available for the few uh, sequenced uh, free living proteins are also in, typically in a very low quality draft state. Um, and uh, yeah, the reason we, why we're interested in this is that we're interested to find the evolutionary history, to detect presence, absence, and infer horizontal gene transfer of genes, uh, and to try to understand also the evolutionary forces that work at the genomic level. So our question was, can we use long read sequencing, and especially minion-based uh, sequencing, to get protist genomes that are relatively complete from complex cell mixtures. So the organisms that we work with cannot be separated uh, from bacteria. They eat bacteria, they sometimes need bacteria to live, uh, for other reasons as well, because they are mostly anaerobes. Um, so our challenge is to optimize growth and harvest of organisms to get decently pure cell material, and devise ways to extract DNA, which does not degrade immediately, uh, and also try to get enough of it of high purity so that it sequences well on the minion. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, often the protist uh, DNA comes out uh, in quite small, well, it's, it's in minority. So we need, need also to try to consider the purity of our preparation genome size, and if there's, for example, an endosymbiont which could be prominent in the sample. Uh, so I will talk about two organisms today that we have been working on. One is this guy called uh, Meteora. Uh, it has been isolated from sediments in Cuba. Uh, it has a very unusual mode of locom locomotion, as you can see. It's neither a flagellate or an amoeba. Uh, it is not closely related to any other eukaryote su supergroup, so it's a so-called orphan lineage. Uh, so for Meteora, we decided to optimize uh, cultivation and harvesting. Uh, and we did uh, DNA extraction using kit-based uh, protocols. So the Magatrix track kit followed by genomic tip from Kayajan. We did fragmentation and one deligation. And we did two different sequencing runs. One was a full run and one was a sh smaller run. Uh, and we had around a uh, little bit more than three gigs of data in total. Uh, so our assembly pipeline is the following. We used the Nova assembly using a Bruin, uh, a refined assembly using Racon and Pylon uh, as implemented in Unicycler. And we mapped poly A reads to be able to differentiate bacterial from eukaryotic parts of the assembly. And for the eukaryotic part, we, used, we scaffolded using S-based long read. And uh, later on also gene prediction on the eukaryotic part. Um, but to start with the prokaryotic bin, where we obtained a 70 context from this sample. N50 was very high, 3.2 megs. Um, so 16 circular assemblies in this case. Uh, for the eukaryotic part, uh, we had an average coverage of around 35 to 40 times, um, 89 contigs, 22 full chromosomes that were bounded by telomeric repeats, and 41 which were telomere ended in, in one end of the contig. Um, and we could see that the genome assembly was very complete. It had a BASCO completeness score of above 95%. And this is also a very unusual organism, so you wouldn't expect it maybe to have all the BASCOs necessarily. 
So this was looking very promising for us, uh, that we were able to reliably differentiate the prokaryotic bin from the eukaryotic bin and still get a very decent assembly of the genome. Uh, we could also pull out a mitochondrial genome, which was essentially complete. We're not really sure. It looks like if you do an assembly graph, there is a large inverted repeat. So we're not, we haven't obtained a close circular assembly of this in all its sequence. Uh, the coverage is also a bit awkward, so we're not sure what's going on here. You would expect if it was a big inverted repeat to have uh, two to one here, but it's not exactly that. Um, the second organism I wanted to uh, talk to you about today is called PCE, and that's just an acronym for Prince Edward Island eelgrass, where it was isolated. Um, it is an undescribed metamonal flagellate, so there's no formal description of it. Uh, it is very minute in, in cell sites, so it's very difficult to separate from prokaryotes. And we only were able to obtain about two micrograms of DNA in total, and we could see from uh, short read sequencing that we had 15% abundance of the eukaryote. But we were able to generate close to six gigs of data for this sample, uh, with relatively nice distribution, uh, and we could assemble the genome almost completely. So in this case, we got a genome assembly in eight contigs, uh, four of which were telomere bounded complete on both ends, and two more had it at single ends. And we could see that the telomeric repeat was slightly divergent from the ones in, in other eukaryotes. And the prokaryotic bin was all, also well, well assembled, and in this case was 48 mix. Uh, we have done a number of genomes uh, beyond the ones I presented today, and we can see consistently that all, our key, all the key metrics in assembly are was vastly improved by introducing long reads. Um, and we see in some cases we get a very much more complete representation of the genome sequence. So sometimes p big parts of the genomes are not represented at all in the Lumina assemblies, but they are in, in long read assemblies. Um, so I just want to then kind of conclude that Protease genomics in complex communities seems to be feasible and doable at the moment using min ion sequencing. Uh, and you can really get accurate binding of the genomes, and RNA-seq data has been useful to you know, make sure that the bins are, are clean. Um, and for us, it's very important then to, because now we can move ahead and get accurate representation of genomes for entirely new groups of organisms. And another thing is then, I mean, as you heard across this uh, conference, uh, short reads are necessary to get highly qual high quality assemblies. Uh, so I'd just like to thank people in the group where I'm doing my postdoc, Professor Andrew Rodri, which is my boss, and, and some undergraduate students, Kate and Shelby. And then our collaborators who are really good at isolating these organisms in the Simpson lab, especially John Eglit. And then we have collaborated with uh, another group at the university to establish uh, uh, min ion sequencing across the two labs. And thank you for listening, and I will take any questions. Thank you, John. Um, any questions? We have one at the front here. She's coming over there. So the first organism you described, is that an anaerobe? No, that's actually an aerobe. Okay. Uh, it has the mitochondrial. The GC content was like 65%. I yeah. thought that would be really bizarre for an anaerobe. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's an aerobe. Okay. Uh, it has the mitochondrial genome and everything. So. Okay. But it's, it is a very unusual high uh, GC content. Yeah.